There he is. What up, baby? How are you? Man. You look. Who's this? Who's the? Who's this guest that we're talking about? That <laughs> you're about. To, you're blathering over. I think Dave. <laughs> I think Dave Grohl. I think I, I'm waiting for Dave. Hell Grohl. yeah! <laughs> I'm waiting for him too. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you? Listen, man. It is. Uh, I was just telling the audience. I cannot believe it's halfway through July. I feel like I have it fully embraced or even started summer yet i've been to the beach like once i usually go to the beach a lot it's only like 30 minutes away and i don't have a suntan or a sunburn so i, I i'm kind of confused that it's halfway through july already man i don't know if you can i'm not sure if my i think my <laughs> face was peeling at some point i've been out in the sun quite a bit i'm in the uh i'm actually in the mountains of colorado at the moment so i'm getting i'm getting my summer vacation in it's a very short-lived one before we head back out on the road for the first time in 17 months so unbelievable been, yeah that statement that you just said as you speak here for john from the main um before we delve into the album and everything that statement that you just said was there ever a time do you think in the last year and a half and we've texted we've had the guys on etc are you did you ever think that that was going to happen? I mean, the uncertainty aspect, we had no idea what the hell was gonna happen. But when, the, tell us like what it was like canceling, rescheduling, hoping, praying everything works out. What was that like, man? I mean, I, I think uh, just based on the fact that like for the past 14 years of my life, it's been pretty consistent as far as our band creates a record then we tour for two years and then we go back in the studio we create another record and we do the whole thing over and we've done that for you know 14 straight years so i think just it was a shock to the system to be home and to try to figure out what that looked like and felt like for us um individually you know and yeah. then compile that with how do you function as a band and how do you maintain relevancy um, when nobody can tour and nobody, you know, and then you, you have this record that you made, but you don't know when you want to put it out. And, um, so it was, uh, I think just, there is no, uh, there, there is no violin to my story because everybody was experiencing it at all at the same time, you know, and, and it, you had to learn how to adapt. And, and I think we did a pretty good job with the live streams and stuff like that, but it was, uh, it was also really, nice to enjoy some time at home i got to become a lot closer with my family um got to spend time with my wife and our dogs and, by the way hell yeah yeah thanks man yeah but now that it's like um you know on the we're a couple of weeks away from sad summer it's like it's i don't know how it, it feels weird thinking about going back out on tour again you know it's yeah. like we're gonna have to relearn how to tour you know how to so. literally do everything you know what i mean because yeah. that's what the main does that's what a lot of our friends do that's what artists do like you said you kind of go through that that process where it's like you tour you release an album you tour take a little bit of time off you write the next one you pre-production you write it boom you record it hop back on, on tour then it comes out then you go back on tour repeat rinse whatever you know and um yeah i can tell you this though already the chat's blowing up with people that are going to be at this sad summer fest john these shows i don't care if you're in new york boston chicago wherever you are the smallest venue to the biggest venue whatever city or town you're in every show is going to be amazing dude it's gonna be wild all the cities too yeah it's like it, it's gonna be crazy it's uh and i think it's like this convergence of the excitement that we're feeling that you know we haven't played a show in front of people in 17 months for all intents and i feel like the convergence of that excitement on our end with people in the crowd not going to shows for yeah. 17 months or longer you know i feel like it's a perfect storm you know it's gonna be gnarly and i feel like it's gonna take not but 10 minutes to get like is this cool are we good or like <laughs> all right yeah we're going you know so i'm really excited to get back into it yeah i mean the fans if there's anything that um uh that 
it, it's interesting because I don't want to say that I ever take anything for granted, but speaking with bands like I do on the gun show the last year and a half, um, it was like, you know, sometimes you go through the motions when you're in a band or whatnot. And even being here in New York City, you know, I'd go to shows three or four times a week, you know, like, it's like, all right, cool, whatever. But I can tell you this, man, I will never, ever take for granted a live show or a live event ever again after not having them for a year and a half. I think we're all in the same boat on that. You know, it's like, it doesn't matter how big the show is. Like we just played our, technically our first show in front of people in, in oh. however many years or however many months. Uh, it was 50 people on a rooftop for our CD release. And it was like, such a wonderful feeling seeing people again, <laughs> you know, like these live streams that we've been doing are like, you're seeing, uh, you know, this much, you're seeing two eyes and that's uh, either, you know, a homie that you've known for a long time or like a random stranger <laughs> and there's eight of them, you know, and this was like 50 people that, you know, f one of the coolest parts about being in the main is, is, is the fact that we've, come to know a lot of the people that dig what we do and, and follow what we do. And, and we've yeah. grown up with them for, for, for a lot of people. Um, and I, it was great to see familiar faces. We did a pop-up shop and we got to see a lot of familiar faces. We did the 50 person show, which felt just like a 5,000 person right, show, you know, totally. it was like <laughs> yeah. the energy. So like, it, it, I, I think we're all on the same page. Like it, it doesn't matter how big it is. These are going to be huge, which is rad, and that's going to be awesome. You know, it's a little scary, like going back into playing and being like, "All right, there's four thousand people here." Zero to one hundred, <laughs> like, right? Yeah, yeah zero to one hundred. Like, let's go. Yeah, just get into it. But I think I think the training wheels will fall off pretty quick, and I feel like we'll 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 get back into the swing pretty quickly. So. It's gonna definitely be something special. Now listen, a couple cities still have uh, tickets available for the viewers out there and the listeners. If you're listening to this on the Gun Show Podcast, Adobe Radio, Spotify, iTunes, et cetera, you should be watching live as well. But listen, we appreciate you listening just and being a part of the Gun Show. But if tickets are still available in your town, in your city, tell all your friends, get the gang back together. Even people that you haven't talked to in the last year and a half, Tell them to come by. There's <laughs> no better way to reunite and reconnect with people than at a main show, Sad Summer Fest, all the drinks in the air, all the music, it, all these shows are gonna be definitely, definitely something special. Tell man. all your tell all your enemies too, because then maybe maybe you'll become homies with them yes. and they'll become your friends, you know? It's amazing. We how gotta we gotta let the water go under the bridge here. Yes. Absolutely. There's no hate. Let not your heart be troubled. There's no hate at a main show or a sad summer fest. It is Guns here on a Sunday night. Shout out to Twitch, by the way. We got that main page placement. We appreciate it. We're getting to all your questions. If you have any, feel free to ask them in the chat room. We got uh, Kevin. We got And. We've got Hannah. We, uh, Hannah saying the main will be my first show back after COVID. I think a lot of people will, uh, are, will agree with that as well. You know what I mean? Like Sick. That's going to be what a show to have as your first one back because the whole lineup is so sick man for that summer yeah we've uh, uh what's really nice too is the f for a lot of the people on the tour we've known each other you know yeah. so the 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 whole getting familiar with one another stage of tour we're taking that out you know so it'll be getting right back into it seeing familiar faces and and hopefully just uh you know not not forgetting lyrics hopefully that <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen that's that's funny that you brought that up because that's a great transition into one of my questions that i had for you because we're speaking here with john from the main brand new album available right now xoxo from love and anxiety in real time ladies and gentlemen let's go let's go let's go uh you did do that live stream the visuals were amazing rooftop sick background seeing live people singing along just being in that atmosphere again like you said a lot different from the live stream which by the way you guys still crushed it we're able to see the viewers comments and everything like that very cool stuff that the main has done but you're back in that atmosphere you play new songs what is it like and how did you as a lead singer how do you learn the words <laughs> for the songs is it like a three-week process how does that go for you personally they're de especially with these new songs um 
Yeah, I mean, I would. I I hadn't sang them since I recorded them, right? right? So, this was like the first time thinking about those songs again, thinking about those words again. And it's not like we we create records and then we just listen to them until we release them. You know, this is like you get them mixed, you get them mastered, and then you don't ever listen to them again. You know, and then like people, you know, you you you'll, you'll happen to hear it, and then you'll be like, oh yeah, okay. This was like, I had to sit with my phone. I had to like listen to the song. I had to look at the words. I had to think about this, you know, it was definitely not three weeks worth of work, but it was definitely a week and a half. And I was really nervous that it was like, I was more nervous about butchering the new songs, you know, like forgetting the lyrics. And, and I was more nervous about that. And then muscle memory kind of kicks in with the other ones that we've been playing. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, especially for sad summer, we want it to be like a, you know, we, we, our, our goal every time out on tour is to try to stand out in some way, mm -hmm. you know, especially in a setting like this, where there's a lot of bands and there's a lot of music, a lot of great music. And, um, so curating a set list for this specific thing is going to be very tough, especially, on the heels of, of a brand new record. And yeah. we, it's gonna be a healthy balance of like, uh, you know, self, uh, the selfish aspect, like you wanna just play new stuff, but then you also know that it would suck to go see a band that you dig only play new stuff. So right. it's gonna be a health, healthy, healthy balance. Well, the good thing though, my friend, John from the main is the new album is crushing it. And I texted a bunch of you guys. I hit up Marquia, I hit up Galley, I hit up so many people. Shout out to Galley, by the way. That's awesome that the main is now, dude, we got label, we got all sorts of promotion happening with you. We got this shit all happening for you guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> but it is wild that it's 2021 and the response that this album is getting, well-deserved, of course, but dude, the reviews are coming in from all over the place. Outlets that didn't ever pay attention to the main are now realizing that the main is legit. They're here, 8123 and more. We're not going anywhere. And it's so effing cool to see, man. I was freaking out. I'm so stoked every time I see more people talking about the main and the placement and it's selling and it's debuting and Spotify's ripping it up and everything, man. So red, dude. What well, an album. Thank you. <laughs> it's been it's been uh, pretty unreal. And, and the hardest part for me to do is wrap my head around how people are actually feeling because normally at this time in a record cycle, you know, we we would release it and day one would generally be like the release party. That would be like day one of tour, you're releasing a record and now you get to see a room full of people react, you know, and not having that has been, uh, I thought it would be a lot tougher to, to, you know, figure out how people were feeling. But like you said, the response has been gnarly and, and people have been really receptive. And, and what's really, really amazing for me is that we put so much thought and emphasis into the songs that we release first, right? Because we want people to, to get a full spectrum idea of what the record's going to be within four songs or so. And this has been really amazing, the reaction of people digesting the other half of the record that they haven't heard and responding so well to it. You know, songs that, that we, uh, we kind of kept as like the, the ones to be discovered when the record comes out. And I'm really excited that people are reacting so, so positively to it. It's really, I don't know, it makes me feel really, um, I think because I don't have that crutch, which is tour and shows, it, it, this one just feels so much more special because um, I don't know. It's it's like it, it, it seems like it's and people dig it, so it's really rad, you know. <laughs> I'd say so for sure, man. Of course, the album is available right now. We're speaking here with John from the Main. Listen, shout out to everybody who might be joining right now. My last name is Guns. I do a music radio show every single. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, interviewing all your favorite bands. We've got Shade coming on next week. We got uh, we just had Silverstein on. We've had Made a Parade. The Wonder Years, Water Parks are ripping it up, of course. Love Water Parks and Austin, everybody from them. This is what we do every single Sunday night. And of course, we've got John from the main. Question, somebody asked in the chat, have you heard the song on the radio yet? Because we know Pat and the rest of the guys have. Have you been in the car and heard it live yet? 
I've uh, I haven't heard it on. I've I've heard it vicariously. Um, I haven't heard like I, I've had people FaceTime me, gotcha. and I've been like you know I generally listen to. Um, I've been like trying to, I, so basically I bought my car in 2014 and I didn't re-up on the, the serious package. So I've been like trying to borrow friends' cars. I've been trying, like, <laughs> You still you have know, the tape deck. You're literally driving around with the tape yeah, deck still, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's so, so I have, I, I've heard it vicariously and it, it's, you know what's so cool to me is that people that, um, have been invested in our band and dig what we do they have not shied away from the fact that we took a song to radio they have yeah, embraced totally. it and they've been like arguably more excited than we have been when when they hear it and that's when i get to to feel that bit of 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 serotonin that freaking rush you know i feel that like holy crap this is like this i don't know this is like the idea of like when, when you start the band, you never imagine something like that happening. And now that it's happening on a daily basis is like, is pretty unbelievable. So keep po anybody yeah. in the chat. If you hear it on the radio, tag me in it uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm a caveman and I don't uh, <laughs> no <laughs> Just okay, tag us in it, post it. It's, it's amazing. Keep them coming for sure. Spread the word, spread the love. Of course, the single is sticky by the main and dude, to be completely honest, um, you know, I've known you guys literally 13, 14, 15, you know, since the band started Daisy EP, et cetera. You know what I mean? Like, let's go. Um, <laughs> but when I literally hear it on like Alt 93 here or on Alt Nation, um, I, it brings me back, and I kid you not, but even same thing with All Time Low. Like I, I, it brings me back to being like 15 or 16 years old. And I'd be hanging with my homies and my friends. You know, we'd be getting into trouble or whatnot or like, you know, drinking two beers or whatnot when the parents would go to sleep in the basement. <laughs> and we'd stay up to like, you know, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m but we would watch much music or Fuse or MTV2 waiting for, sure. waiting for like Newfound Glory or Sum 41 Fat Lip or just like Good Charlotte Lifestyles or whatever. Matchbook Romance. Yeah, and just being <laughs> taking back Sunday Decade, you know what I mean? For and just sure. being so excited and feeling like, like it, it might 2 a.m., who cares, but just feeling those things. And that's what I'm getting now when I see the main on the radio and just people appreciating this album, man, like that's the feel. I feel like I'm 16 again, which is wild, you know? That's amazing. And I, I think that this sort of opportunity that's, that we're, we, we kind of fell into is making us, not that we ever fell out of love with what we do, but it, it's like you said, like before the, the freaking pandemic, it was like, it can be, sort of like a, a cyclical thing like you're just kind of running or even walking through the motions you know and and oh we're gonna go back out on tour that's because that's what we do right but this was like this whole last year and change has kind of um really reignited a lot of the passion and i i feel like it, it, it's uh in a lot of ways it's been a, a a blessing in disguise because like you said uh, there are things that you take for granted and and now that um you know touring is back on the horizon i feel like it, we we won't take it for granted you know we can't we can't afford to because it, it, it can all go away like that you know and and i think that this was a uh, yeah this this door being opened is like I don't know. It's like you're saying, it's like making us fall back in love with what we do, you know, and, 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 and with the, the idea of who the main is and, and who we are as individuals. So it's really rad. One of the cool things that uh, we can do here on Twitch is people can interact. And I want to delve into the album because I haven't spoken to you. I had Garrett on. I think Sticky had just released. I think Sticky had just come out, but I hadn't fully heard the other things. I heard them via a headphone when I was walking on the streets of New York City with somebody who had it. And uh, I heard it through one ear. I was like, oh, like a demo of whatever. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. But Garrett loves anxiety. He's like, that song is like, uh, like he loves that song. But somebody, and I want to delve into the album, but of course we want to get to the chat. Um, we have 
where is it? Uh, okay. Uh, Hannah Montanay, for John, what was the concept behind the original lyrics for Pretender? Which, by the way, is a fucking jam, and I can't wait to see that on live. I love that song. Oh, man. The concept, um, to be quite honest, it, it, it I honestly forget kind of, I, I think the, the, the broad stroke of the original concept had to deal more with um, love. And I felt like it, it was about, you know, I, I don't know when, f f until I met my now wife, I was only writing about love in an abstract form, right? So I was writing about things that I was perceiving or people that I, you know, uh, had known firsthand. I was writing about their experiences from my perspective of, of love. And I felt like um, it's, it's a lot easier to write those songs about love now that I'm experiencing it, right? So I, I felt like Pretender the lyric just wasn't right and it, it was about love and it it was it just felt like forced you know um so i ended up scrapping it after i kind of uh, went through the rest of the record and that's where i kind of stumbled upon the idea of of staying i guess a bit more um a bit more true to to yourself as a person and and coming from a different angle and, and not talking necessarily about loving somebody else but about self-love and 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 that whole kind of uh, i guess experience so yeah it, it took me a while to wrangle it but i i i thought i, I think i got it there to a place go. that i was proud of there you go hannah there's your answer right there uh with xoxo which is a new album by the main shout out to everybody that's joining us right now feel free to drop a follow below it would mean a lot of course next sunday we've got shade on they'll be performing with us as well 7 p.m eastern um with this album, because you did do it during, you know, <laughs> I don't want to make a joke about it, but now, like, kind of looking back, it's like, figures, at our point in our, like, all of us that are with us right now, we get the once-in-a-century pandemic, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, just our luck, you know what I mean? Like, oh, great, we can't do anything. Great, just our luck, you know what I mean? It happens at this time. But from you releasing or writing, or, you know, and, 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 you know, thinking lyrics and all that stuff, was this one of the more difficult albums to kind of put together from writing words? Or was it kind of like, hey, I don't really have distractions because I'm not on tour. I'm not writing lyrics in the back of a tour bus trying to like put things together. Now I can kind of sit back and just analyze and make it happen. I think one of the biggest points of emphasis that I wanted to make to myself was I didn't want to make this a record about quarantine specific. Right. You know, I didn't want it to feel like a, 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 like something that we all acknowledge is happening but so specific to a t and I, I had a lot to say about um my life and what was going on in my life and and i wanted to i think for the first time in a long time maybe other than you are okay um i just spoke about things that i wanted to say and i just things that i was feeling and from the heart and not to say that you know any material prior to that was phony or, or, or inauthentic, but it, this was just, I was worried less about how people would perceive it. And I was worried more with just getting things off my chest and then, and then letting the chips fall. And I, I think, um, I'm really proud of just the, the, the way that our band came together and, and, um, you know, we were able to kind of, uh, figure it out on our own and, 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 you know, for, for those who know, we haven't had really any, any label attachment since our second record. So um, I think because of, of our confidence as a unit, I think we were open to the idea of working with Matt and Mike. And, and um, it was just, I don't know, like the confidence that we gained from this record process and, and producing the record ourselves, um, I think it opens again more doors for us in the future and 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 really kind of as a, a a huge boost and this could very well be like the the first half of the second chapter of our band you know and i'm i'm really hopeful for that but it's uh it, it feels all like it's uh 
it feels really, really right right now. It's all happening, baby. The main Hell new yeah. era, the main 2.0. Let's go on a Sunday night Guns and Gun <laughs> show. But yes, the main new era. I completely agree with you, my man. This album being able to just come together and, and just how it sounds. Um, what I like to do, especially like with friends and stuff, when I hear, when I listen to like a new song or a new album being released, I like to immediately jot down my thoughts, especially with the friends, you know what I mean? And I just want to read a couple that I have with this brand new album from the main called XOXO from love and it <laughs> in real time. Um, are they appropriate? Are they, well, are they, are they PG-13? <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. Uh, I wrote this lyric, it says, I love the drums in Love in Real Time. That spatial sound of them, it's, I, I fucking love that. I said that song is gonna be awesome with like dark lights around it, maybe a spotlight, like a fog, like a mist when it comes out live, you know what I mean? Like it brings <laughs> okay, that vibe, yeah. okay? I feel you. And then the background vocals towards the end of it are fuck, I cannot wait for Kennedy to do like it's gonna be i can't i i that song has just grown on me hearing it like especially yeah. with the headphones on so i love that song there's so many um levels to this album sticky to high forever to like a classic main sound with april 7th to then you have pretender which is obviously gonna crush live and then anxiety is probably and i literally wrote this probably i think one of the best songs that you guys have ever written it just hit me i just love that song it just resonated to me. Like, it, it probably won't be a single, but it, it doesn't have to be. It just fucking hit me. And um, I love the part where it's, uh, and the last song, at the end, when it's the same afraid, uh, it's the same afraid I've felt before. You know what I mean? Boom. And uh, just boom, everything going on. That's so, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There is, <laughs> there, 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 it might be a rumor, but um, there could very well be an extended version of love in real time that we didn't release so you tease just throw just throwing it out there so what does that mean what do, what do we have to do follow the main on social media to find out what's no, happening see I, I my 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 our intuition was uh keep it keep it condensed right and let people marinate in the record see how the vibe is and then if they dig that then uh, you know, months. We'll We're see. talking months. We'll months. see what happens. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, but would you agree with me, though, man? Like, I feel like this album is so rad because I can play it on the gun show. I can play it for my friends. I can play it for people that know the main. I can play it for my friends that don't even know who the fuck you guys are. But every song, like, each song has its own feel to it. And it's awesome because I can, you know, bring people in it's so it's just a really well diverse album man like i like li literally what i said all like i named five songs that all have a different vibe to them and fucking crush and then you got lips, yeah, I, I, lips I, and I, sticky I, you got all the songs too you know i think you can attest to this because you you've been a good friend for so long and you've kind of been around and you've seen and heard um all things the main but i think that we're in such a fortunate position because we have had so many different sounds right we've had so many different sounding songs but we've only been afforded that opportunity because of the people that stuck around that's that stick around and, and hang around and and feed off that and and i don't think people really understand that um when we go out and make these kind of records uh, an experiment with sounds it's because of the trust that we've been offered you know the trust that we've been given by the people that listen to us and and we only do those things because we want to keep bettering ourselves we want to keep pushing the boundaries of of what somebody would i mean because i i don't know from my perspective it'd be awfully hard at this point eight albums in for somebody to ask me well what does your band sound like right <laughs> like I don't even know what I, what song I would play him at this point. It's like I don't know. Like here's one of the new ones. Hopefully you like it. But if you don't like that, maybe there's something else in there. And, and I think that's the most amazing part of the opportunity that we've been given is that we've been around long enough to where we can kind of uh, I don't know, just kind of experiment and and just kind of play around. And and it's been really really rad. So and this record is is. 100% what you just said. It's it's us kind of jumping from page to page, but it, it 
for for us we felt like it felt cohesive yes. in the the sequencing of the track totally. listing and and we were really putting a lot of emphasis on that and making sure that when you put the record on it felt like an experience from start to finish and not just like random songs you know right. No, it, it definitely flows, and especially, you know, that's what the main does when they put it together, but especially with this one, though, you know, you kick it off with Sticky, and then I, I you guys crush it last couple albums with your with the last songs, by the way. I mean, from Flowers to the one, on this one, I cannot wait, like, that song's gonna go off live. That's what you guys do. I'm just bummed because I love the last album so much, and like, we only got to see it like kind of short, like, but I know you guys are gonna incorporate some of those songs, but like, we didn't get that full, you know what I mean? Like, I just want to hear those songs. I want to hear these songs. And that's what somebody asked in the chat. They wanted to know, now that you were able to play some of the new songs live, did any of the songs kind of hit you? Or like, you were just like, yo, this is a banger. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know. I felt like anxiety was a moment. Like, it was a really important moment. And I feel like uh, there will certainly be like a time and place, especially on a headliner for something like that. Um, the crazy part to me has been the response of like the other songs. Like I was saying, like "Hi Forever" got a ton of love in my comments, and I, you know, that was a really we were worried about that. Not worried because we loved what we made and we were proud of it, and that's why we put it on there. But we were like, "Well, this one could go either way." You know, like people could be really down or like not down at all. So I don't know. There's songs like that that I'm like, we should just we should just say fuck it and we should just play like some stuff that like might not you know might surprise us and stuff with energy and and dirty pretty is like yeah. people are responding to that one really well too so it's it's so freaking tough <laughs> when we're not headlining too you know it's like when we have like 40 minutes or whatever the, the set is it's like you want to play again you want to play like things that people know and are familiar with and will be nostalgic about but you also want to hit them with some of that new new so it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be tough but it that's that's the fun part for sure you know i gotta give uh either the tm or one of the techs whoever's doing audio whatever it might be that person might have the hardest job for john from the main because they're gonna be in your talk back being like no talking song 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 like 40 minutes you gotta be, <laughs> it's almost like warp tour no interaction just keep going Obviously, depending on uh, de depending on how many beers i have too the, the, <laughs> if i if i have this is my first and i'm on vacations but if it's salute. like i have five salute if if i have five of them then there's it doesn't matter what anybody says i'm just talking for sure get to some questions we speak here with john for the main shout out to twitch by the way for uh, giving us that front page placement uh splendid china says john's rants are the best parts of concerts my friend so hey hey tell my hey will you tell my band that please <laughs> tell my band that can we cut get that him, clip and send it? <laughs> <laughs> question on that man because um was there ever uh i had silver scene on friday and i was talking to shane and he was uh we were talking about just like tech problems and stuff, especially like when you're broadcasting and stuff. And we were talking about like live shows and stuff. From you being the front man, you know, obviously the what like with the mic and stuff. Um, did you have to kind of do you ever kind of learn how to just interact? Like you know, if power goes off. Like have you ever played a show and all of a sudden power went off and you're just like, oh shit, I'm stuck on stage. Absolutely, <laughs> we've done it many times. We've done it in Germany. I remember we we played like a. The, one of the sweatier shows that we've, we've ever had, but it was like, I don't know, 400 people sold out and in this tiny box. And we got like, we were in it and everybody's sweaty and having a great time. And then the PA just stops. And th those are the moments that you kind of like, for us, that's, if, if we were ever any, I don't know, we never took to the pop punk um, genre because it, we didn't feel, we felt like we were more pop in our music, but we feel more punk in our approach, the DIY approach and that. If there was ever anything live that like we live for, it's the moments that are unscripted. It's the moments that teeter on chaos and success you know it's like this could be awful or this could be something that we will remember forever and those are the things that i really look forward to those are the moments that, again because 
even though we play the same songs, generally we play the same songs every set, right? You play one in Chicago, you play the same set in New York. I never say the same thing twice. I'm never doing the same, you know, I'm always living for the, oh, this is gonna be really uncomfortable, you know, or this is gonna be really amazing. And generally you can tell when it's gonna be really uncomfortable because Pat will start the next song on the drums and he won't let it get too, <laughs> too far. So that's the one thing that I really am looking forward to is just like the ability to win or lose a crowd uh, in a moment's notice for sure. And of course, I mean, the, the, the fans are absolutely going to love this tour. Tickets are available in your city. I'm telling you, you need to effing pick them up right now. Let's go. This tour is going to be awesome. Sad Summer Fest. Grayscale's on it. I fucking love Grayscale. Grayscale are so good. Of course, All Time Low. Everybody's on. It's going to be so much fun. It's also 2021, and the main and All Time Low are arguably the biggest they've ever been, which is fucking wild. <laughs> I mean, Isn't that it's wild? Just, it's, that's crazy. It, 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 I mean, it's awesome, but like, that's wild. No, it's amazing, and it's like it's such a they've they've killed it, and and they've they've had such a, a good run too with, with and and that's what I actually was talking to Jack last week. I got to see him for the first time in a long time, and it was like we from the the mains perspective, we had come off of our cycle, so we were already planning on writing and not being on the road and we were planning on recording a record for them they put a record out in the whole thing and like you said they got arguably bigger than they have ever been so it's like it's so nice to see and it's such an awesome time and and i don't know it's really exciting to know that we're going to be on tour with them and, and yeah them killing it so it's uh, epic. it's gonna be so much fun. All these shows are gonna be incredible. Just want to get into a couple more questions. Kevin says hi forever gives me John the Ghost vibes. So there's that. Uh, we've also got Jesse is a Marie says no matter what you're feeling, there's a main song for you. Okay, absolutely agree with that. Um, Splendid says I just love how your sound has grown over the years. Uh, we've got Andre Nuts, just huge fans. So shout out to that. Um, uh, the idea of writing about love and anxiety, did that come pre or post pandemic, even though we're kind of still in the pandemic, but was like, did that kind of develop? That's what somebody wants to know. Um, I think that was kind of uh, just whatever was pouring out at the time. I think definitely anxiety was heightened, but also in the ways of, of not just the world being in disarray, but also navigating um, your own life and then uh, somebody else's as well and trying to balance all that. And, um, so it was definitely not a cognizant, like I'm writing about this and this, it was like, these songs are kind of shuffling out the way they are. And, um, that's kind of just the way I packaged it all together. And it worked, man. Of course, this is speaking over John from the main, follow him on social media, follow the band, pick up the album, listen to it, the whole entire thing. A couple more questions we'll get to, but I want to bring this up real quick to you because we're going to have some fun here on a Sunday night. Um, on this date, let's do this. All right. Ready? Get ready. Okay. Stretch it out. All right. Maybe have a drink. I got you. Salute. I let's got go. You. Salute. All right. All right. On this date, July 18th. 2020, 2010, you okay. played the Eagles Club in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> wow. Okay. Ago. I'm just going to go through some memories that happened on this date, all right? Do you remember? That would have been. Yeah. Sorry, what were you going to say? I'm going to say, go, do you go, remember go. what your opening song was? But also, do you remember what tour that was? I actually don't know. 2010? <laughs> oh, man. I would actually venture to guess that we were on tour with. Augustana, maybe, um, and that would have been on Pioneer, which we prob or wait, I don't even know actually. Shit, <laughs> 2010. Sorry, I'm not sure if we if, <laughs> if we were on, the spot. <laughs> on uh, if we were on the Pioneer tour, then it would have been um, with Arkells and Lydia, but if we were on that same cycle, I think we would have hit Eagles Club with Augustana, and we would have probably opened with Identify. I don't know. Well, it's a little wrong on that. But as far oh, as shit. the opening, you opened with okay. in, Inside of You, 
Oh, shit. Into okay. the fuel to the fire. Into oh, wow. So this was black and white. <laughs> this was black and white for sure. Into girls do what they want. We all roll along. I must be dreaming. If I only had the heart, this is the end. Right, girl, into your arms. Daisy, motherfuckers. Whoever she is, <laughs> growing up, the way we talk, count of one, two, three. Don't stop now. Everything asked for, and we'll all be. What a. <laughs> this was definitely black and white. That was the black and white record. So we didn't even, I, uh, I don't even know what time is anymore. So it's all blur. That wasn't on Pioneer. <laughs> all blur. <laughs> now today in 2017, you played what I think was one of the coolest things that the main has ever done. And I know this fan base absolutely loves you guys. You played Brazil today in 2017. Really? Which was- an, Really? Yeah. Shout out to Brazil. We- uh, Those shows are wild, right? they've always been amazing and it's been uh it, it's one of those like we've actually had people ask um from other bands and and and, and whatnot like how did you how did you guys get there how did you guys go down there why do people like you so much it's like i have no fucking clue but we keep going back and people keep coming to the shows so it's uh that's crazy that's already been four years goodness i think that was one of the first times you went right probably 2017 that's probably the first run I, 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 um, I mean, I think we've been there earlier. I think we've been there earlier. earlier. Well? Yeah, yeah. 2014 on today, you were at Warp Tour. You played 2014, seven years ago. You played the Palace of Auburn Hills in Michigan. Do you remember okay. what you opened with the 2014 on Warp? 2014 would have been <laughs> Forever <laughs> Halloween. I think Forever Halloween. Again, my time. Uh, uh, I, know, I could be I'm all the way off, spot. I just love going through the memories, though. You know, <laughs> Forever Halloween, and we would have opened with um, Run. Nailed it. Solid. Got man. it. Solid. Let's go. And then it, it's funny because it's July, and it seemed like every other year, or almost every year, it was Warp Tour. So you know what I mean? It was cool to pick up the uh, 2010. You know what I mean? Different vibes and stuff. And of course, they'll be on tour in 20 days from right now. The main will be at Sad 20 Summer Day Countdown Fest. Let's go! Let's go! Um, final thing. Anything that you want to say to the? Actually, real quick, give me a trivia question. Because when I see you guys, because we're going to go to a bunch of shows, I want to give out, I'm going to pick up a CD or a shirt or something. I'm going to have the winner, you guys will sign it for them. So I'll mail it out. I'll buy it myself. I don't care. And I'll mail it to a winner. Do you have any question that you want people to know um, that they can guess on? And then I will give them an autograph from you guys, personalized. Um, I, I don't know why, just why this one popped in my head. But um, what song was I referencing in Lips on the new album? I actually don't even know the answer to that. So text me. Really? I, okay. All right. Text me the answer. By the way, I fucking. What? what, what okay. Sorry. 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 What the main song? What earlier oh, the main okay. song was I referencing gotcha. in our new song Lips? Boom. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I was like, what, is there a shout out to a, some Jim Blossoms or something? You know what I mean? No, because <laughs> I did, I did, the, I did the Sweet Caroline shout out at Sticky. So yes. this uh, is that, that. This is not a Neil Diamond cut. <laughs> this is a the main cut. Boom. If you have the answer, tweet me the Gun Show G U N Z. I'll get you a personalized autograph when I see the guys in twenty something days from right now. Um, real quick, Kevin wants to know what was the inspiration to write the banger that is dirty, pretty beautiful. By the way, I've seen that one pop up all across social media. People fucking love that one. Hell yeah. Um, that one was uh, actually one of the first instrumentals that I had for the record. Um, and as we sort of uh, kind of chugged along and, and kind of hashed out the rest of the record, um, we felt like we wanted to differentiate it from sticky and from lips especially because the guitars start in a similar fashion so i decided to just go full pop with that one um i wanted to like we had the idea of of having the chorus be a double chorus especially when the vocal drops uh, a couple octaves or whatever it is in the double um yeah we just wanted to experiment and get as as poppy as we could and it, it, uh, it worked. And people said, 
Uh, <laughs> So uh, people love it. And uh, yeah, listen, people are loving it in the chat. My man, I appreciate you coming on. We'll wrap this up. Um, we did it a little bit different. For those first time viewers out there, I do a radio show called The Gun Show. John's been on. Let's get some Let's get some G's in the chat for guns right here. Let's get some G's in the chat. Horns for, up, let's for go. G, -g, -g, G unit, let's go. The Gun Show, Guns and Rosé. Not Guns and Roses, Guns and Rosé. Ball in. <laughs> let's go. But I've had John on throughout the years, and we kind of did a different experience right now because with Twitch, of course, it's more interactive and want to get uh, you know the fans involved as well. So, John, I appreciate it, man. We were able to talk about the album XOXO. It's available right now. Seeing those songs live in the background, like I said, it was so awesome. And I'm so happy that Alt Nation and everybody's playing the, uh, the songs. And I'm even more pumped from 20 days from right now. It's like the first day of school, man. It's like I'm gearing up, man. I'm ready. I am ready, dude, for it. 20 days, Sad Summer Fest. All the friends are going to be on it, and it's going to be very, very special. If tickets are still available in your city, pick them up right now. You do not want to miss this. And, dude, concerts are back, baby. Shows are back. They're back. We need this more now more than ever, my friend. John, from the main, last thing. What do you want to say to everybody out there? Thank you so much for all the love on XOXO thus far. It's only been a week. It feels, uh, I don't know, very overwhelming in such a great way. Uh, tell all your friends, tell all your enemies. Uh, hopefully you don't have enemies, but tell them <laughs> to listen to our music. Uh, tell your uh, boyfriend, your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend, your girlfriend, your current girlfriend, your wife, your fiance, whatever. Whatever. Tell them all. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. We'll see you all this summer. There uh, it is. 20 days. Damn right we will. His name is John XOXO. Also, Dita128 says John's, reference, John's referencing the way we talk on lips. Is that the answer? There it is, right oh, there. Dita128, you have won. Tweet me, DM me um, what you were like, maybe a shirt, whatever, and I'll have the guys personally um, personalize the autograph to you when I see them in a couple weeks. We won't Dude. put Guns' name on it. We will not put it. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. John from the main. We're going to play Lips right now. My man, salute. Take care. Fucking love you. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Support this band. We are rolling. The album is so good. Ten songs that you can just vibe to. Every single time I re-listen to this album, I just love it over and over and over. And I appreciate different parts of it. I can groove to it. I can party to it. Sticky. It's fucking hot and humid every single day in New York City. I'm just like, well, might as well listen to Sticky because I feel fucking <laughs> sticky. Whatever it might be, the main resonates. Love you, man. Be safe. Follow him. John from the main. All right, sons and seven, sons and seven. Yes. There's still hope. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Chris Paul. Love him. Thank Thanks, you, man. Guys. Appreciate it.